Drop on, grip it, push it, catch it, in a hand. I can be really tell me when you love the UBC. They really tell me when you love the UBC. You know I'm in my own and you stop Black Pirate Radio beamed across London. The transmitter is rigged on top of a tower block. It's amateur, it's illegal, but it has an audience, and pirate radio stations are a growing problem. Yeah, you're tuned to the sounds of Dread Broadcasting Corporation. Frequency saying 93.9 megahertz. Now, here come Black Hour. Some, like this station, are on the air regularly. Others are more intermittent. But they're nibbling away at the audiences of BBC or IBA licensed stations and bringing into question Britain's whole highly regulated system of radio broadcasting. Operating on a shoestring, with cheap equipment that clutters the airways with signals, the Dread Broadcasting Corporation staff believe that the music they play and the chat in between give a service that legitimate radio cannot provide. You've got communities, you've got Indian, you've got Greeks, you've got Blacks, and, but, but the, the BBC and Capital and LBC can't cater for these communities, they can't do. So in order to make that point, you're prepared to break the law and run an illegal station? We have to, because uh, they won't listen otherwise. We have to. And face whatever penalties of you make? Of course, have to, have to. Even if it means paying huge fines? Even or if it means going to, to prison. If it means going to prison. Last week, for the 15th time in four years, DBC's transmitter was seized by members of the 270-strong Radio Investigation Service. They operate from this London office of the Trade and Industry Department and other bases around the country. Broadcasting live from the North Sea on 319 meters. Pirate Radio got its name from the ships that broadcast pop music from the North Sea. Today there are just two. They're foreign owned and outside British jurisdiction. Brought to you by Newsweek magazine. The investigators' monitoring equipment has already detected no fewer than 73 illegal land based stations broadcasting in Britain this year. Some are run by ego trippers and show offs, others are thoroughgoing commercial concerns. It's a good, good morning, Sunshine Radio. This Shropshire field is home to the powerful transmitter of Sunshine Radio. The security precautions are to deter the investigators. The equipment is housed in the caravan. The actual studio is in a farmyard building. Sunshine Radio Music. A reminder that you get a chance to phone in and win on the pop quiz around 12.45 today. It's now 12.20. Sunshine's diet is pop music and local titbits. The nine minutes of advertising in each hour again, are voiced by the disc the jockeys themselves. Sunshine. Independent radio news. Try and on the hour, Sunshine Radio relays independent radio news from the licensed signal radio at Stoke-on-Trent, an act of pure radio piracy. Sunshine is making tens of thousands in annual profit. What does owner Graham Simons think he's achieving? Exactly what we have achieved by providing a, a local service, a local radio service to this area that is both popular profitable, viable, I suppose, and um, it's got a future. I believe it's got a future. Do you think it demonstrates how cheaply these things can be done? It's not very cheap. Nonetheless, Sunshine Radio cost a small fraction of what it would have cost to be legal. Pirates own their own transmitters, so they can determine how far away their stations can be heard. Sunshine purports to serve South Shropshire. In fact, it can be heard loud and clear in several adjoining counties. Phil Fearall in Galaxy, everybody's laughing. It's Radio Wyvern on a Wednesday afternoon. Forty miles away in Worcester is Radio Wyvern, one of Britain's 43 commercial radio stations and one of the ten that are not making money. And Worcestershire. Radio Wyvern. Wyvern News. One reason for that is the far smaller cost to advertisers of buying time on Sunshine, which is heard in much of Wyvern's area. In any city that is to have a commercial radio station, the Independent Broadcasting Authority, the IBA, requires local citizens to raise at least half a million pounds and pass stringent tests. Evelyn Cox is a director of Radio Wyvern, and Pirate Radio is destroying her investment. At the moment, we are absolutely hamstrung by constraints, and very expensive constraints. 
and they have no overheads at all except for the fines that they get periodically in court. They don't have to pay um, copyright fees um, to the musicians, for instance. I mean, we pay out, I think, over 70,000 a year to Performing Rights Society, Musicians Union, and so on. They don't have to pay anything at all because they are stealing the copyright on the music they pay. They don't have to pay for a national news service. We pay out £20,000 a year for a national news service. Sunshine just relay that same news service without paying a penny for it. We have to pay 38000 a year um, transmitter rental to the IBA so that our programs can go out. They pay merely their electricity bill for a signal because they can put unlimited power through their transmitter. Their signal is much stronger than ours. Aren't your standards quite unrealistically high? You're not comparing like with like. Independent radio is not in the business of continual pop music. We are indeed restricted under the copyright agreements to not more than nine hours of gramophone record music per day. Now, the pirates are not so restricted, so they can play 24 hours of back-to-back -back gramophone records with the occasional DJ. We don't use that phrase. We call our fellows presenters because they speak uh, intelligently as well as playing records. All they have a live microphone for is to announce the next record. No one mentions that radio, whatever it is, the pirate station, breaks down frequently. And no one cares that its, its performance of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony is disastrous to listen to. But the pirate radio stations in Britain, or at least a fair number of them, broadcast a perfectly satisfactory signal. You can listen to it on your radio or your car radio. With if, great they're only, if they're only interested in pushing out pop music for reception on trannies, where people wouldn't know a decent signal if they fell over it, then I'm not surprised that they can make statements well, like that. But our stations, stereo and our stations broadcast in stereo the highest possible quality of classical music and other forms of specialist music so that people who've gone to the expense of buying hi-fi equipment in order to enjoy reception in their homes can do so. Radio Wi-Fi we are Sienna. However outdated the IBA standards may now appear, Radio Wyvern and the others have to observe them. They see their enormous payments to the IBA as protection money that should enable them to enjoy their franchises without unfair competition. I've been out into this area and I've asked a lot of small investors to take a stake in their own radio station. They were sold the proposition on the basis that we would have the franchise for this area and that that franchise was protected by law. And it does not appear to be protected by law. But some pirate stations have been jumped on decisively. This is the entire staff of one of them, Sheffield Peace Radio. They're scouting for a suitable transmitter site on a hill overlooking the city. Their last transmitter was seized only eight weeks after they had begun their weekly two-hour program of music interspersed with left-wing political material. A new illegal transmitter will cost them only £200, and they aim to resume broadcasting soon. They're already recording tapes to be transmitted from a car stereo out of doors. Sheffield Peace Radio is the truly independent, guaranteed non-government radio for the people of Sheffield. And in tonight's programme, as well as lots, lots of good music, we've got an interview with the Sheffield Troops Out movement. Followed... There have been other political pirate stations. The racialist Radio Enoch in the Midlands, for example, and a current pro scargill station broadcasting in Nottingham. Somehow the Radio Investigation Service is always hot on their trail. And on that particular evening, uh, we got on the bus from the studio, got, got the bus across town, set up the equipment, and uh, about three quarters of an hour later, we were surrounded. People had come out of bushes. Uh, there were two plainclothes policemen, eight British Telecom officials, and they just surrounded the site. Well, the chap in charge of the investigation, when we asked him how, bearing in mind the fact that we hadn't had much publicity by that time, we hadn't, there hadn't been any complaints of interference to our knowledge or even to their knowledge, we asked him why it was they'd started tracking us down. And he said the directive came from London, came from the Department of Trade and Industry in London. And his very words were, you made a mistake calling yourself Sheffield Peace Radio. They don't like that down there. The signal is very, very strong, and it's to our right. Can we go up this road up here? We well, we've, got, we've got to go around this yeah. roundabout. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, you go around the roundabout. Don't go the wrong bloody way. But, but the radio investigators have their own problems. Some have even had their families threatened. They have to deal with all forms of interference, not just pirates. Up here. 
How about up here? That's it. Yeah, well, we're, we we're looking straight at it now. Straight at it. These investigators are using direction-finding gear to pinpoint an illegal transmitter before seizing it. Someone looking out the window up there, too. For the past month, a change in the law has enabled them to do that without a court order. I think this must be it. Yeah, that's it. We've got him. There have recently been ten transmitter seizures, and court cases are pending. The Radio Investigation Service faces an uphill job. Many magistrates simply don't take illegal broadcasting seriously. It's a victimless crime that does no apparent harm to anybody. And some pirates say they'd rather be legal and offer to pay music copyright fees. Consequently, they usually suffer no more than the standard fine. Of 40 successful prosecutions of illegal broadcasters last year, 38 left the court and went straight back onto the air. Radio Jackie, Radio Jackie in suburban London is a case in point. It's had transmitters seized in some court cases, but has been on the air for 15 years. It's supported by local Conservative MPs and councillors, and the radio investigators say there's increasing political pressure to lay off Jackie and other popular pirate stations like it. Jackie's owner enjoys establishment sympathy. We have had instances where a local magistrate has said, that he and his wife have never spent such an enjoyable weekend listening to Radio Jackie. And after this instance, he came out of the court and he spent some time talking to us and taking car stickers and various bits and pieces that the station produces. And that's when he just fined you £400 for breaking the law? He was very sympathetic towards our cause. But he just fined you for breaking the law? He had. Radio St John's Greek Orthodox Church in North London, Archimandrite Leontis has his Sunday service broadcast each week, illegally. He goes out on London Greek Radio, one of three Cypriot pirate stations. They had their 30th transmitter taken last week, but went straight back on the air. The station is financed by advertising, but serves a linguistic and cultural minority. The majority of uh, our old people cannot speak the language and they feel completely isolated. They haven't got friends and so on. And therefore the fact that uh, they listen to the Greek Orthodox service every Sunday, um, the fact that um, they listen to the music uh, and uh, about the history and about the culture and about mythology, which we have programs about, uh, I think they keep them uh, together and it gives them some kind of happiness. Would you rather be legal? Would you rather be licensed? Well, absolutely. I mean, save all this fuss and running around, having the police and the trade and industry people chasing you every day, preferably to be legalised, yes. Mrs. LGR, London Greek Radio. The Greek stations and other pirates broadcasting in Turkish, Arabic and other languages highlight the extreme pressure that Britain's rigidly regulated system of radio is under. Radio is now cheap and easy to do. New York sustains 65 legal radio stations, Paris 54 and London 3. The government has made cautious noises about the possibility of legalising low power local stations next year. There will probably be a place for community radio in the broadcasting scene in this country in the future. For but smaller commercial radio stations? Yes, if we're talking about large pirate stations, then the IBA has considerable interest on behalf of its contractors to make sure that if there is such a development, then the ground rules are exactly the same for everyone. And the government will have to consider what standards of broadcasting it wishes to see in the years ahead in Britain. In fact, as France showed in 1982, the system could be deregulated tomorrow and the pirates brought within the law. By their growing numbers and continued existence, they have created a historical fact that makes the liberalization of the airwaves in Britain more and more likely.